What's up everybody and happy Friday. I hope everyone is doing well today. Today I want to make a video to talk to you about yet another bank bailout. We've all been hearing about First, First Republic Bank over the last couple days and if you are participating in their market swing on Thursday or yesterday, you potentially would have made 60% return on your money. But as of right now, as the market opened Friday morning, the stock is down roughly 20%. It was down 20% in the pre-market and it's all because of the problems that were there before the bailout are still there today. I'm going to give you a little bit more detail about that bailout and who came to the rescue of First Republic Bank and does this really just spread contagion across all the other banks or does it help consolidate the issues to First Republic? Stay tuned. I'm going to talk about all that coming up next. Hello everyone, my name is Paul Zachary Shelton Jr. If this is your first time coming to my channel or seeing one of my videos, I ask that you please hit the subscribe button. Please ring the bell so you can get an update each time I post a new video. And lastly, please like and share this video. So let's go ahead and jump right into today's topic. Happy Friday again. Enjoy your weekend. Happy St. Patrick's Day to all of those out there celebrating and having a drink later on tonight or potentially right now. But let's talk about what has taken place. So the largest bank in our country, J. P. Morgan Chase, CEO Jamie Dimon, was in Washington over the last couple of days. He did meet with some senators and the Senate Banking Committee to discuss potential help for First Republic Bank. Now, it's not essentially just help for First Republic Bank. It's help for the banking system. It's help for regional banks who typically get beat up a little bit more because their portfolios are regional, more regional, and then they're kind of concentrated to whatever industry is in that region. We saw that with Silicon Valley Bank. They were concentrated more so towards the tech companies, which received a lot of volatility and trouble as interest rates starting to rise. So if you drive a little bit up the state, a little bit further north from Silicon Valley, you'll get to a place called San Francisco, and that's where First Republic Bank resides. Right now, First Republic Bank is the 14th largest bank in our country. However, it is a regional bank with regional operations that are expanding a little bit, but primarily located in the similar region of Silicon Valley Bank. Potentially, they have some overlapping clients. Potentially, they have some overlapping risk. So what has taken place, and I won't go into the details about all their risk and other metrics, but what has taken place is $30 billion has been infused and injected into First Republic Bank, not by the federal government, potentially backstopped by the federal government, even though articles say that is not guaranteed by the Federal Reserve or the U.S. Treasury. So essentially, what does this mean for those that have placed deposits into First Republic Bank? If First Republic Bank is in trouble, isn't it just throwing good money after bad? Market forces typically work. Um, companies typically survive or they go out of business. The strongest will survive, the weakest will fall. Now, it's not necessarily nice to say, hey, your company deserves to fall or your company deserves to survive, but things do happen. I'm a business owner. I run a business. I have to fight. I don't get bailed out from other banks or anything of that nature. So we're all kind of in this together. I do agree that we should have something in place to help the banking system in general from collapsing. We do not want to see a collapsed banking system. That is not good for anyone. But is it really the responsibility of the competitors that's to go out and help their other competitors stay alive? Some would argue yes. Some argue there's a moral hazard behind it potentially too. You know, you could potentially have First Republic Bank continue the same practices that they're doing that's causing um, some of the trouble that they're having. Um, part of the issue that they're having is over the last quarter, their net interest margin has significantly reduced and has not been able to be offset by the amount of new loans and inter higher interest rates that they can charge and more income that they can derive and bring in. So essentially, they're receiving $30 billion from 11 different banks, uh, Wells Fargo, JP Morgan Chase, and by the way, Wells Fargo is not far from them down the street. Um, also... Bank of America, 
and Truist and some of the other larger regional banks have come to their aid to provide them a total of $30 billion in assets and deposits that they can use. Now, why this is important for them is if your deposits dwindle down to a level that's too low at the same time, you have too many um, assets such as loans, such as things of that nature that offsets um, your balance sheet and your income or net interest margin income or total income or retained earnings is too low, then you get into a scenario where your net worth ratio for the institution is too low. Once that falls too low, then you fall into a receivership. Then there's a significant run on the bank. Then a lot more deposits run out. So what happens in the future, potentially a year from now? And I would love to hear your comments from everyone out there. What do you think will happen if First Republic Bank continues down the trend that they were heading down over the last year and continue to get into financial trouble. As we've seen that backstop, I should say backstop from those other other larger banks or the other competing banks, helped the stock really rally yesterday. The stock popped up and if you bought in Thursday at the open and close, you know, and closed out your position at the close yesterday, you would have made roughly around 60% return on your money. However, the stock is already down 20% today. Um, there's nothing that has fundamentally changed other than they received $30 billion and more deposits. Will that really help um, that net worth scenario? Potentially it may not. Potentially that $30 billion in infused cash that they receive doesn't do much to offset decisions that were already made by management over the last year and, and processes that are already in place going forward. I look forward to getting your responses and hearing your comments about this whole banking situation that we're in right now and how you feel that it's going to play out and any investment themes and ideas that you have to share around this. I have several ideas that I'm sharing and that I have been sharing uh, with my clients and internally at, at my business here. If this is your first time coming to my channel, I ask that you please hit the subscribe button. Please ring the bell so you can get an update each time I post a new video. And lastly, please give me a thumbs up. Please like and share this video to help me spread the joy of financial literacy across our globe. Thank you so much and have a great day.